Hey, I'm Carbo Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, President of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new trigger spring kit for your Grand Power Strybog. A solid 33% trigger pull reduction from six and three quarters down to four and a half. Just can't beat that. Works for the Gen 1 and the Gen 2. Hope we can do more stuff for the Grand Power Strybog, man. Hoping this bolt stop could be replaced. Charging handle here. It's all up to you guys. More your requests, the more likely it is we're going to make it. Really love what we're able to do with this trigger pull. It feels so much better. Nice, crisp reset. I mean, that is right in the money right there. Sweet spot all the time, every time. Let's get on over to tabletop, show you how we did this. Parts needed for this build, Grand Power Stride Bog, Trigger Spring Kit by M Carbo. Works with a Gen 1, Gen 2, good to go there. It's got a lighter hammer spring and a lighter disconnector spring. Parts needed for this build, bench block, 1 16th inch punch, 3 32nd inch punch, 1 8th inch punch, hammer, little flathead micro tip screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. Little caveat here, if you wanna use a better tool, you know, I always get comments about, you should've used this tool. Well, we try to do it with simple tools, but if you wanna use a roll pin punch, that would be ideal, go for it. 3 16 roll pin punch, but I'm gonna do it without one just because I like to make it hard for myself. Before we get started let's go ahead and check our firearms together make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, bolt face, magazine well this firearm's clear. If you guys want a better bolt stop maybe a better charging handle let us know. We are definitely interested in doing more for the Grand Power Strybog just a matter of getting those requests so it's all on you guys just make your request heard. YouTube channel, email, you name it just let us know one way or the other man we're happy to do stuff. Let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we're starting with. Six pounds, 11.4 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Six pounds, 13 ounces. All right, you just gotta push out, tap out these two takedown pins right here. Just center up on the bench block. I mean, you don't have to use a hammer. You don't have to tap it. You know, you just gotta get them out, all right? And you don't wanna tap too far because they are held under spring tension there. There's a little spring clip on the inside I'll show you. It just really helps get them started, just tapping them and then just pull them until they snap. You'll hear that little spring engage right there, just like that. All right, so we can pull off the lower. We can set the upper aside so we can take a good little close look at the lower here. So you can see how those takedown pins are captured by that little spring in there. And you got your little bolt stop lever here. This is something you guys want an improvement for. We'll certainly make one. It's all about those requests. This little plastic safety that kills me. If you guys want something there too, we can do that. And another little takedown pin back here. Spring, simple. All right, what we have to do is remove the safety selector so that we can get the trigger group out. And that's how it's held in there. Pretty simple. All right, so the safety selector just breaks into two little pieces there on the inside. We're gonna do that now. So we'll grab our little micro tip. I like to just, especially for this camera demo, I'm gonna set it up on my bench block like this. Before we jump into removing the safety selector, if you got your hammer forward like this, go ahead and lock it back. And then we're gonna rotate the safety selector to safe. And the reason we're doing that is because now you can get access to the little detent that's under this part of the safety and the little detent that's over here on this part of the safety. It's just much easier that way. They're kind of housed in this little rectangular channel that's on each side. You can see that. We're gonna start with the right side selector first. So we're gonna push down that little detent, make sure you find it, you should feel that springiness. You know, it's really easy to just be pushing on the polymer and think you got it, but you know, no go. You should feel a little springiness. All right, so I feel it pushing down, and now I'm taking my micro tip, it might be hard to see, so I'll kind of go real slow here. I'm pushing down, take my micro tip, and I'm literally gonna push it right off. And it pops out just like that. So you can see there's your detent right there, it's plastic. And these detents are universal, exactly the same on both sides. So these will wanna spring away on you, but at least they're big enough and easy to find. So what we need to do now is press down on this detent on this side so we can get the rest of the safety selector out. So we're gonna press down, and what you'll notice is you're only gonna be able to press down for so long until you start hitting that punch in there. So I'm just pushing through the other side with my finger just to get it going. All right, and I'm pretty much maxed out. Hopefully you can see pretty good, but it's pretty much impacting. So I could literally just take my punch and knock it through, but everything's gonna explode on me. Don't want that. So I'm gonna take my three thirty-seconds inch punch and I'm gonna follow through with it. So I'm gonna push the whole thing out slowly and it should capture all those little detents that we're worried about right now. So pushing it through, following it, and it's capturing everything. And there we go. Fairly painless. A lot of hard lessons learned there, but it's not bad. You let it spring all over the place. They're not that small. They're easy to find. All right, so safety selectors out. We'll review everything again here in a second once we get it all out. So now we can pull the whole trigger group out. And it's good to have the hammer locked like this. Definitely makes it easy. You know, bolt stop, you can go ahead and flip that forward. You don't need to have it sitting on top of your trigger group. It's just going to get in the way. So just push up on the trigger from the bottom here, and it'll all start 
coming out nicely. You know, you want to keep that hammer locked. You don't want to pull the trigger, just pushing up on it, kind of pulling on the whole assembly there. Pull up on the assembly. There's the orientation. All right, set that down. Now we can get the detents out. One of them already kind of fell out. You could just dump all this. I mean, this is all that's left in there, but at least for good demo purposes, you know, I'll get these out. This is literally the only reason I have these needle nose pliers, just so I could do that. So if you don't have them, don't worry about it. You can just dump it out. And there's two springs in there. I'm gonna pull them out just to show you, you know, non-essential step here. At least if you lose them or whatever, it's a reference for later. Now, that's really what I like about having these long-winded videos, just good thorough reference. So there you go, lower is empty at this point, at least for the major components in the trigger group area. So we're good. So we can set this aside. Let's do a quick review of everything. All right, so this is everything we just pulled out. Trigger group, our safety selector switch, which splits into two halves, and then the detents. These are plastic detents, completely universal. You don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. And same with the springs, universal, the same. You know, so interchangeable. All right, so here's your safety selector. Very simple how it goes together. You got a rectangular peg here and a rectangular hole. They just go right in like that. And that's how they locate. Very simple. All right, you can see how those detents are engaging on these insides here. Very good. Not a whole lot to that. So let's go ahead and disassemble the trigger group. All right, so here's the trigger group here. It's all kind of held in by tension. You know, these pegs aren't retained by anything. These little support pegs right here. They just kind of make sure it's all separated and even and has clearance. And then these are your two hinge pins here, trigger hinge pin, hammer hinge pin. All right, so you can see your trigger return spring down here. Good to notice this orientation. All right, then you can see your hammer spring inside, how it's captured. Now, we start pulling on the trigger, everything will start shifting. So you don't need to do this. I'm just trying to give you a visual here. So you can see your hammer spring in there, how it's captured. I'm just gonna replicate that exactly. You can see your disconnector spring right there. All right, we're gonna pop that baby out, swap it. Same with the hammer spring. We're gonna leave the trigger return spring in place and it's that easy. Release your hammer now. All right, we'll go ahead and take our 1 8 inch punch. We'll press out the hammer hinge pin first, get that out of there, then press out that trigger hinge pin, get it out of there and swap some springs and we'll be in business. So go ahead and just push down on that pin. All right, you wanna do it quickly so you can capture everything. It doesn't start shifting on you. So push it right through, not fast enough. So the intention is to do it quickly, but you'll survive. It's not the end of the world. All right, so there's your hammer and your hammer spring, just like that. We'll just lay it down for now. We're not gonna sweat it too bad. And you can see this trigger hinge pin already started coming out. So everything just is really held in by tension. There's nothing retaining these items. So we'll push that little pin right out. We're good to go. So there's a the trigger group housing. You can see how it's barely held in. These support pins are just sitting in there by tension. So just line them up again and they'll snap in place. Take a look at our trigger here. You can see the disconnector up here, the disconnector spring back here, a little shiny one. And here's our trigger return spring. All right, so we're gonna have to replicate this orientation. Just remember that little loop goes right here. That's how it locates, right under the front of that trigger there. All right, and then you got the legs pointing forward toward the face of the trigger. So we'll just pop off this trigger return spring. It's just captured on those ears right there, so no big deal. Pry it apart, just try not to completely wreck this spring. You are gonna have to bend it a little bit to slide it off those ears, but you know, springs are pretty resilient long as you're not like bending the crap out of it. So we'll set that down. Now what we need to do is press out this little bushing right here. So it's like a two piece bushing. So what we'll do is we'll start by pressing out this inner portion right here. I'm just gonna use the 1 8 inch punch, but if you wanna be sophisticated about it, go ahead and use your 3 16 inch roll pin punch. That would be preferred. Just set it up on the bench block right like that. So you got your roll pin punch, you could just push right through and it'd be Simple as pie, 1 8 inch punch. You know, it's not that big a deal. You just grab the edge and push right through. You just don't want to grab both edges. Grab that inner edge there, push right through like that. Simple as can be. So this bushing goes together just like this. And that's how it's captured in there. So when we're pushing on this side, you know, it's the side with the two cuts. You know, you got obviously one circle here and an outer circle there, as opposed to this side, which is one machine piece. You know, you wouldn't push on that. You're not going to get very far. So you're pushing on the inside Right here, you're essentially driving out that whole thing because it's captured right here. So it's captured right there and you're pushing on that inside piece and that's what's separating the two, like that. So pretty simple concept. I like how that was all put together neatly there. And you can see this is where the hammer spring legs will rest right here on that bushing. All right, good, enough of that. So we'll set that aside and leave it put together so you got a reference later. And your disconnectors right here, just comes out like that. Pretty simple and straightforward. Disconnector spring sits right in there like that. And there's a little channel for it. So we're gonna put our M-Carbo lighter disconnector spring in there. 
Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll open up our Grand Power Strybog kit, buy them carbo, hammer spring, set that down, disconnector spring, all right? So I got the M carbo spring here in my right, factory in my left, a little springiness test. So you can see that M carbo spring is definitely lighter, all right, gonna give us a nice trigger pull reduction. So we'll put the shiny factory one back in the bag. Not gonna be using that, but it's handy to keep spare parts. I mean, you never know. So we're gonna take our lighter disconnector spring and drop it right in that little pocket right there where the other one came out of. You know, compress it right in. Take our disconnector, we're gonna drop it right in like this and make sure you get that little cutout to locate on top of that disconnector spring. All right, and it'll compress. And now all we gotta do is put that bushing back in. So remember we had our bushing here. Now it's not essential to have it the same orientation. It would be good. So whatever orientation you had it can be the way you put it back in. It's not gonna be the end of the world. You know, it's set up to be essentially universal. What is not universal though is the way you push it out, which is what we went over. So we'll compress it. I'm gonna put the solid piece on the right hand side there, right over here, like it was for me. And then I'm gonna take that other piece of the bushing and slide it right on. And what we're gonna do is line up these flats right here so that when the hammer spring sits on it, you know, it sits on it evenly. So they're lined up. We're gonna go ahead and compress that disconnector, make sure we get the holes lined up good. I'm gonna push down on the table here as I compress that disconnector so that I can ensure all the holes are lined up and push that bushing all the way in. You know, you wanna make sure these two edges right here are flush just like they were when we pulled it out, all right? So the bushing is completely inserted all the way. We're good to go here. While we're at it, let's go ahead and take our trigger return spring, pop that thing on. So just grab it like this. I kind of like to have it located like that. And I just kind of pry up on that loop, get it to pop over. We got one on and should be able to just pry the other one over. But if you have any trouble with it, you know, just use your little micro tip to help guide you. All right, looking good so far. You can see how that bushing kind of rotated a little bit. So we'll make sure we've got those flats facing up. We want those hammer spring legs to rest in those two little flats that so helps lock and locate in place. We've got our trigger return spring in the proper orientation. Just kind of gonna be a little flimsy like this for now. All right, good. So we can set the trigger down for right this second. We don't need to mess with it anymore. We can go ahead and focus on replacing this hammer spring. So we're gonna replicate the same orientation. You can see this is the strike face right here. You know, usually a little bit more worn than the rest of the hammer. All right, and you can see how the loop locates behind the strike face. So we wanna replicate that exactly. You see the orientation here. So your coils, the way they're pointing and how you got that loop and the legs going the same direction. Simple stuff, but I like to go overboard on the details. So you just kind of pry those loops right off. Simple little replacement here. So there's a the hammer spring. So now we're gonna replace it with the Carbo hammer spring. A little easy trick is just drop it in like this, because what you're trying to do is get some leverage. So you just kind of hold it right there like that, and then just pull up on the loop on one side, flip it on over, and then pull up on the loop on the other as you're kind of popping it over there. Simple stuff, but it helps those little tips. Otherwise, you're gonna risk bending your spring. Nobody wants to do that. So we got our hammer spring in the right orientation, strike face up here, got the loop right here on the back, perfect. You can see the way the legs are going, the loops are pointing. Excellent, we did it. All right, get rid of those stock springs, but keep them in a bag somewhere, never hurts. All right, if you show me what you're working with, this is what you have right here. So your trigger housing, your two hinge pins, you got your trigger with your trigger return spring, your disconnector there. You got your lighter disconnector spring in place. You got your hammer over here with your lighter hammer spring in this orientation, pretty straightforward. You can see this is where your safety selector is going through once we get it all back together. Let's get into it. So if you take your bench block, all right, and you got this little medium hole here, you can definitely squeeze a punch in there. This is like having a set of third hands, almost like an assist. Because if you have any problems, you can use this to basically line everything up. And we'll get to that in a second. It's not necessary, but it's always helpful to have little tips along the way. So make sure your frame pins are in place on the trigger group there, you know, your support pins. And we're gonna drop our hammer right in first. This is the one that's gonna have the most tension. All right, and you can see right here, is where that hammer is going. So we take our hammer hinge pin, drop it right through, make sure it's all the way through on the opposite side. These pins don't have a whole lot of engagement on this trigger housing. So you wanna make sure they're completely flush on both sides. Strike face pointing forward, away from the safety. Good. And you can see your hammer spring here, how it's gonna wind back towards the safety there. It's captured just like this. All right, now we'll take our trigger and we're gonna line up those legs on those flats we were talking about on that bushing right there on the trigger. Kind of squeeze your hammer spring legs together, get it captured, all right? And this is where that little bench block with your little punch in there is gonna come in handy. So the goal here 
is we're going to compress the hammer spring, get everything lined up, and then just drop it right on that punch. That helps make it a lot easier. So I got it all lined up, make sure I got it in the right orientation. I don't want to get this hammer spring leg on the wrong side of the trigger return spring. I want the hammer spring legs on the outside, just like that. And I'm going to compress. And once I get it in the housing, I'm doing pretty good because everything starts to get captured and contained by that housing. I'm doing really well right now. I can drop this punch right through, just like that. Almost kind of just take my hand off for a second, allow me to get the pin, then we're gonna chase it through as we pull up on that punch. So we're gonna set the tension again, push up on it, got my little pin ready, and I'm pulling up on the trigger group. What I've definitely got to do is make sure I got good clearance there. So push pretty good on that trigger as we're starting to walk that pin in. You know, nice thing is you can always start over. So if you don't get the alignment just right, you know, drop it right back in and then try to grab another position on that trigger. Maybe you can get your thumb like this and your middle finger like this to kind of hold it just right because you're gonna to need to position it just right so you can throw that pin right in. So I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Drop that pin in. You know, the other method would be to push down on your table. You know, there's definitely a few ways you can go about this. So I got the pin most of the way through. Now I just gotta push a little bit more on that trigger, pop that baby in. You can see that hammer spring leg starting to kind of cause some interference. You know, that's something I'm gonna have to deal with right here. So I'm gonna push down on the tabletop, take my little 1 inch punch, just move that little hammer spring leg out of the way. And that was all it took. And then it just pops right into place. So a couple ways to do it, I find that's Fairly straightforward, fairly helpful. You're gonna probably throw it together much faster as you're not trying to demonstrate and talk your way through it. But I think that is definitely an easy way to do it. All right, we're gonna check our work real quick. So we got our hammer in the right orientation, hammer spring in the right orientation. We got our trigger down there with the disconnector spring replaced, trigger return spring in the right orientation. See how it's captured right here? We got the legs right there. All right, we're doing pretty good. Now you don't want to lock it and unlock it and play with it at this point because it's not back inside the pistol grip frame yet. So that's what really keeps it all snug and captured. So let's go ahead and grab our lower. All right, we're gonna throw it right in. Now before we do that, gotta make sure we get our little springs and our little detents in place. So grab your detents and your springs. Remember they're universal. So we'll go ahead and get it set up here. I just like to use the 1 inch punch. It's a good guide to drop these springs in. You know, this wasn't a necessary step. So if you already got them in there, you're ahead of me. Nice and easy, both sides. Punch works as a good guide there. So you can see those springs are in the proper orientation. Universal detents, we're just gonna drop one on each side. In those pliers, drop it right in. And kind of get them to fall right into the perspective hole. All right, so they're gonna kind of sit in flimsy like that. You know, don't expect anything fancy at this point. They're just kind of sitting in there. And what we'll do, we're gonna drop our trigger group in there, slide that trigger in the hole, in the lower, start dropping everything through. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you get that trigger return spring situated correctly. You're also gonna wanna make sure you avoid those little detents in there. So you're gonna have to push those detents for the inner portion of the housing as you slide down your trigger group and you'll start to feel that tension on that trigger return spring. And naturally those legs on that trigger return spring should line up on the floor of that lower, no problem. You know, that's why they have those little bends on the ends of them. So you shouldn't have an issue, but if you do, you can always make sure you're kind of starting back like this, and then you're gonna push the forward end completely down. So you just wanna give it a chance so that it lines up appropriately. It's hard to see in here, but it's not complicated. I mean, just make sure it's not binding. Make sure your little detents are pushed towards the inside here, away from the trigger housing. And we're gonna push all the way down and everything kind of snaps and locks into place, just like that, all right? It's not locked in place yet because we don't have the actual selector switch safety in there, but that's next. So we're gonna get it all to lock and locate together with that selector switch safety. You can go ahead and take your bolt stop, throw it over, kind of contain part of the forward end there, of that trigger group. Now we gotta get that selector switch safety in there. So as long as our detents are in place and our spring, which this one is not, so as long as you're not moving it all around like I was doing, you should be fine. But you want it to locate right in the perspective hole. All right, we're gonna compress it. Take your little selector switch safety. Remember, we put it together earlier, but you know, one side's got a long end, one side has just got the female end, a little shorty there. So we're gonna take the selector switch. This short one goes on the right-hand side. So get it started over here. I'm already pushing up against the little detent. All right, I'm gonna push straight down to the detent. Once it finds that hole, just press on that detent, all right? Make sure you got good springiness on it, and it should compress all the way 
into the hole and you can push that safety selector through. You hear it snap and lock and that's a good sound. That's what we want. All right, good. So we got that side on. Now we've got to put the other side in. But before we do that, make sure you lock your hammer back. All right, make life a lot easier. It's going to give you the clearance you need to get that safety all the way through. Now you can get a good amount of leverage with this post here on that detent. You know, it's narrow enough where you can kind of just shimmy it in there, grab that detent. And if you're good, you can push it all the way through almost. And then take your 1 16th inch punch, push that detent down just to allow you enough clearance to get it all the way through. So simple enough, pretty straightforward. Safety selector operates and functions perfect. All right, now let's make sure it does work. So safe, nothing, good. Fire, good. So now we can go ahead and throw it back into the upper. And at this point, man, we're pretty much good to go. Pretty much done here. Give you a good little close up of the orientation and everything. All right, let's throw it together. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw the lower onto the upper. One thing I wanna point out is you got this little leg of a spring here, right? That's for your bolt stop lever. So we wanna make sure we get that lined up with the bolt stop lever. So I don't want that to be missed. You know, make sure your takedown pins are locked all the way open, get the lugs lined up, get everything to locate so we can drive those pins through. But most importantly, make sure that little leg of the spring is captured on the bolt stop here. All right, just make sure that lower is good and compressed into the upper. All right, hold it together. And then you can just push down the table as you're looking through those holes to make sure everything's lined up. At least get them started. You know, it makes it a little simpler and then just push them all the way through and you're done. And we are back together. Good to go, man. Let's go ahead and do a quick function check. All right, it's on safe, pull the trigger, nothing good. Pull the trigger. Ooh, that is nice. Much, much better. Keep it depressed. Let's listen for that reset. Beautiful. Oh man, this feels good. I love this. Reset's nice and crisp, good and light. Just exactly what you want in that sweet spot there. We're not in that high six range. I can definitely tell you that. All right, let's go ahead and measure this trigger pull. Let's see what we get from modified trigger pull. Four pounds, 10.4 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Four pounds, 7.4 ounces. Well, there you go, guys. A nice solid 33% trigger pull reduction for your Grand Power Stride Bog. Can't beat it. Really puts you in that sweet spot. Just making it a much better platform all around. Really hope we could do some more things. Charging handle, bolt stop lever. It's up to you guys. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Car Brotherhood, as always, for your ideas and your support. As always, happy shooting.